What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm gonna talk about uh, JP Morgan and all the stuff that they're doing. I'm gonna give you the date of when, well, not the exact date, but the month that JP Morgan plans to go live with ISO. I'm also gonna get into uh, the Swift roadmap of when they plan to go live with ISO and some other countries. The big plans for Ripple and XRP, why Chris Larson was in London last year. There's a bunch of juicy stuff in this video. You guys are gonna wanna stick to the whole thing. No goldfish, so stick around, learn something. Let's grow together. Let's get into it. So here's JP Morgan. This is what they're putting out guys 2020 jp morgan crypto is scams all right 2023 we're adopting that shit transaction complete for your business it's actually just the start payments are messages opportunities to tell the world where your business is headed exchanging in new markets says you're looking beyond today transacting with advanced layers of security says you can be trusted they're highlighting the metaverse here i hope everyone realizes what this is jp morgan is highlighting the metaverse and offering seamless ways to pay says you can stay ahead in a world where anything is possible right. at jp morgan payments are our language we process nearly 10 trillion dollars a day in more than 170 key currencies and we've built a legacy preparing businesses for the future investing billions in tomorrow's tech so our partners can adapt and innovate to move them and the world say more with your payments Okay, guys, understand like JP Morgan, uh, Citibank, and HSBC are like the three conglomerate banks. Like 60% of all payments on the globe, if they're international, go through one of those banks. So they have the money to build out all of their infrastructure. That's why JP Morgan has Onyx. So when you look at something like Ripple and you look at Stellar and you look at HBAR, right? They're really facilitating and helping small to medium enterprises, institutions, not as quite the bigger banks that already can pay for their own solutions. So we're just gonna have to see how this goes, but check this out. So I played this in another video, but I'm gonna connect it with something even juicier because it light bulb moment went on in my brain after I watched this, just playing it for my community. And I'm gonna show you. Process, thank you. Uh, another uh, question that is related. Is your go live this year for cross-border? or for domestic payments? So it's a very good question. And the answer is both. And why I say both? Because SWIFT, it's the initiative of SWIFT, it's CBPR plus. So we're gonna be following those timelines. Having said that, we also follow the timelines of any other country that we are uh, a direct participant. So for example, Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore, South Africa, New Zealand, Australia, they're all migrating to ISO and they have their own timelines. And we, JP Morgan, because we're a direct participant, we are migrating and we are following those country specific timelines. So the answer is. Okay, so what is the timeline for CBR Plus? I'm so glad you asked because I pulled it up just so I could have it handy for you. What is CBR Plus? Cross Border Payments and Reporting Plus is a work group of payment experts whose mission, it was their mission, guys, mission from God, to create global ISO 20022 market practice and implementation guidelines to ensure a common rollout of the implementation of ISO. So when's that happening, Sensei? Right here, November 2023, right before Christmas. Now, guys, I don't know if this means they're gonna start using cryptocurrency in some of these payments, but they're going to have the option to. So will they use it? Probably, I, I don't have, look into my crystal ball and tell me the future. I don't have that over here, right? I'm just going with the information that I provide and I show you and hey, let's see what happens. But it's interesting, AMMs are supposed to come in like September, October, and now you then you have Swift, JP Morgan in all of those countries. And you also have JP Morgan telling all these other banks and institutions that work with JP Morgan, don't wait to 2025. So it'll get interesting. Brad, damn, Brad Kimes. I, I, my mind went blank. I was trying to get it, but I couldn't. All right, so Digital Perspectives, that's his name. He posted this and this is a juicy little clip. So let's play it and let's watch along. UK says, forget it, we'll do it. It became what's known as the Euro dollar market, which is the overseas market for dollar borrowing and lending that becomes a we don't know the size of it but let's call it a 400 trillion dollar market <laughs> whoa <laughs> and then the, i love that then guy. we get this big breakthrough in the tips the us has got the chicago board of trade doing futures and options and all of this stuff but we start to figure out more complicated structures things like swaps and the us stops its banks doing it by its use of regulatory capital. They're like, no, this is inefficient. You can't do this. The UK and Europe went, well, we're going to regulate and allow it to happen because it's big. We've seen this before. That becomes a quadrillion dollar market. Whoa. All the 
major banks, <laughs> largest operations for London. That guy's too good. So London, if you've been watching the news, is going to do the same thing. It's called regulatory. London is putting together a very sensible set of crypto rules, as has Europe, as has Switzerland, as has Singapore, as has Hong Kong, as has Australia. Okay, Whoa. there's its old trading group that it did with euro dollars and it did with derivatives and it did with foreign exchange, all got their regulations in place. The UK is the hub at the middle and it will capture the lion's share. And before you know it, Coinbase, Gemini and everybody will move to London. And isn't it timely that just about a year ago, Chris Larson himself from Ripple was over in London because London is looking to pull more business and capital from the US. How timely it is. The focus of this trip, though, is money. City, quick to see you. That's Chris Larson. A billionaire round table. So Silicon Valley, London, have a lot in common. Fair to say these tech big hitters could lose a million dollars down the back of the sofa and barely notice. I'd be looking for that shit. I'd be looking for that million. To prize investments away from the Bay Area and over to its biggest tech competitor, Silicon London. Whoa. All right. This is a juicy video. You got comedy, you got education. I mean, what else do you need out here? Hey, if you haven't hit like, please do so. It helps me grow. If you're not subscribed and you come back for multiple videos, I'm going to look at, I'm going to come get you. All right. All right, JP Morgan promo. The future is token based, right? So here you go. Moving money can be challenging. Traditional payment rails create limitations like complex and costly cross-border transactions and limited cutoff times. The needs of payments providers and corporate treasurers are increasingly complicated but they're constrained by current systems with limitations based on locations, currencies, and account types. Global payments infrastructure needs to evolve. Efficient payment mechanisms need to be agile and direct. Complex multi-account structures need a way to move money globally 24 seven with technology-driven automation and programmability efficiency. Enter deposit tokens, a transferable token that can be used as collateral and unlock new pathways for storing, exchanging, and settling funds while still benefiting from the trust and stability of commercial bank money and connectivity to traditional financial services. You guys realize when all this happens that all of our deposits in the bank, they become tokenized, right? Now, where that value lives, I don't know, but it's gonna live somewhere. All right, because now it's all digital, right? It, it, it's going to be digital on your phone. You're going to look at it like you always have, but in the background, that's how it's going to flow seamlessly. We believe the future of money is token-based, where information and value movement merge and money moves instantly, replacing slower message-based systems and ushering in a new era of financial efficiency. We are transforming the future of banking. We are on there you go. JP Morgan is putting bank into this. All right. I love this. All right. This guy, he works for the federal government here in America and he drops some juicy names in this, right? He talks about Bitcoin, but he also talks about my favorite company in the world, which is Ripple. So let me play this. People say, how can you trust you know, the Fed to do the bookkeeping? Like I say, my response is, well, you don't expect the Fed to steal your money. If the Fed can print all the money at once, it's not going like, to mess around with the book. True. So we have this big spreadsheet, the, the blockchain, if you want, but it's just managed by the Fed. It is very cheap, much cheaper than Bitcoin. If you're willing to delegate. The okay, listen to that. Much cheaper than Bitcoin. All right, because at the end, it's going to come into effect here because he brings up Bitcoin again. Like we could use Bitcoin. Let, let watch responsibility to a third party and but then the downsides to all of that of course is some you'd actually suppose you didn't want the fed to be responsible for processing the payments suppose the fed will likely impose some kyc restrictions on, on some purchases they might not process some purchases that you might want to undertake and so it was at that point that i said well we could if we wanted to extend the concept one step further let's extend i'm not saying that this is ever going to happen but just conceptually you could imagine uh, not fed wire for all like a fed coin what the fed would do is actually just issue these bitcoin like objects but and they would enforce a par exchange rate with the u.s dollar that would eliminate the exchange rate volatility but they could delegate the clearing of these payments to some third party some sort of ripple like protocol what so he goes back to bitcoin but a ripple like protocol he's like man maybe i shouldn't have said ripple there but Interesting, interesting, interesting. Let me finish. It's eight more seconds, and then I'm going to show you how much money goes through Fedwire. I gave the responsibility of processing these electronic Fedcoin payments to the miners. And the idea there would be. All right. So I, this is a side note. How much value goes through Fedwire? Because he said Fedwire. All right. Fedwire monthly statistics. I show you 
All right, Fedwire, and I've shown this before, but hey, if you're new to the channel and you're just now joining, so average daily volume of transfers in the millions. So 4.4 million millions is 4.4 trillion, trillion with a T per day through Fedwire. I would love it if they use Ripple for even a drop of that money, man. I would be chilling. All right, this is from XRP Ville. Go follow XRP Ville. He posts a lot of great XRP content. I love the guy. He made some really cool artwork for me. I've got a big heart for this guy. All right. The world of money. This is Christine Lagarde. This is, oh, my bad, guys. I'm thinking, pre, I'm thinking pre, what's it called? This is Christina Georgieva. Apologies. So this is April 18, 2022. Obviously, it says on screen, but she's going to tell you where this is all heading. Now, if you didn't know, this is the person that is contro controlling the IMF, World Bank, this is the person that makes the decisions. The world of money is going to do the right thing. And it is to drive innovation that private sector is so good at providing. She's talking, she's gonna be driving innovation that private sector is providing. That's companies like Ripple, Stellar, HBAR, etc. In technology combined with the trust built by the participation of central banks, regulators, and standard settlers. And that is moving in a way that hopefully will bring to the uh, economy this cheaper, faster service that digital money can uh, provide without the uh, overwhelming risks we have to be mindful of. And what are these risks? Private uh, digital money can try to do wrong things, support crime or terrorism. They can avoid taxation in a way that affects the public purse. The produ production of some of them, like to get Bitcoin, means energy being used in massive amounts in some countries already causing deficit of energy. He just told you it's never going to be Bitcoin that they're going to use ever. She just highlighted how bad it was, right? That, this is her thinking. Now, I know me and you think maybe it's not as bad and they're finding new way, renewable ways to mine Bitcoin and all this great stuff. That's fantastic. But the head of the IMF is telling you it's never going to be Bitcoin. And on top of it, we have the big question of standardization and inclusion in a global system for which policymakers have to step uh, forward. All of this being said, we are at the crossroad around how fast, how far, in what proportions. But sure, I see this as a one-way street in which digital money are going to play a bigger role. So better roll our sleeves and make sure that they are trustworthy, that the providers are regulated, and that is across central bank digital currency. Now, the IMF works very closely with the BIS, and we just saw Ripple was invited to on that task force with the BIS. So you tell me what's going to happen, guys. I don't know. I don't know here. All right, this is Cindy Young. She's talking about the at the Money 2020 conference. I'll save you the, the 20 seconds of ads. What does Ripple do? Ripple is a leading crypto and blockchain enterprise service provider, purely serving business customers. And we've been focused on addressing problems in the cross-border payments world using blockchain and crypto over the last 10 years and we've built out RippleNet which is a payments network that does exactly that. I think what I'm encouraged to see compared to maybe about in about two three years ago I had seen crypto blockchain topics seeping in through the agenda and almost taking over in a way that in all the conversations even if it's completely other topics there's only a question around this so I see that trend has been almost adopted and now it's a natural part of the financial uh, services and payments industry and I can see that that persists. And again, those who are building for the long term, I continue to talk about it, continue to talk about the real world use case. And I'm really excited and encouraged to see that again, despite all the sort of some of the challenging uh, developments happening in the space. It's a really fantastic opportunity again to catch up with all our partners and customers and obviously with perspective and really spread the word around what Ripple is about and how we can deliver uh, benefits to other cross-border payments businesses and help uh, companies get into this crypto enabled future um, with a trusted party like uh, Ripple who's again been working with institutions from day one. 
institutions from day one, playa. All right, by 2025, there will be five mainstream blockchain DLT platforms from my good friend at ISO. Here you go. I cannot read this. So it is what it is, but you have applications, you have platforms, you have infrastructure, and then it's interesting how you see Ripple on all of these PDFs and documents, right? And people's are like, hey, XRP is not going to go anywhere. Ripple is not going anywhere. Come on, guys. Like, seriously, you need to watch more, more of my videos. Trangolo. Ripple has purchased 60% of Trangolo. So they actually control parts of that. And what Ripple does, guys, is they buy all of these different companies that already have licenses in certain jurisdictions. That's how they control 90 to 95% of the FX market already because they've done all these acquisitions like Medico, like this, like FOMO Pay, like D Money. There's so many, there's so many. That they bought. 15 years ago, Trangle started as a cross border airline company. Over the past decade, we have transformed our journey to cross border payment where we have processed more than 15 billion US dollars to 30 pay our countries. I'm so proud of Trangle's achievement today and we continuously expand it. All right. The reason I wanted to show you that, guys, is this. Trangolo Docs, I'm on their website. You can go like home and Trangolo Docs, and then you go low countries, and then you look at China because this is interesting. And then you have cash out method direct credit bank account link with Alipay. So people say, hey, Ripple is not involved in China. You're right, but Trangolo is, and that is connected back with Ripple and XRP. So could China and people in China use this technology to move money at the speed of light for less than a penny? You're damn right they can, guys. All right, I know this is a little bit longer, guys. Thank you so much for dealing with me. If you made it to the end, please let me know because I love you guys the best. Peace, guys. I'll see you in the next one.